This is the video for 12.4 multiplying probabilities. First, we're first going to look at the probability of two independent events. So if you remember independent, this means these two events, the probabilities are not affected by each other. They're completely independent of each other. So if two events A and B are independent, then the probability of both events occurring is, is the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. So you saw this when we were looking at the, the fundamental counting principle and how we could say if there was a certain amount, we would multiply it together. Now we're doing it with the probabilities. So independent probabilities, the probability of A and B, we multiply the two probabilities together. If, if the probabilities are dependent, so that means that one event happens and then the second event is affected by the first event, then the probability is... It, is first the holy cow sorry about that uh, it's the probability of a and b is probability of a and then the probability of of b following a so we have to find out the probability once a has happened what the probability of b is so a die is rolled twice we want the probability of it being a five and then a one so what we have to do is we have to think about the probability of it being a five which that probability is one sixth. We're going to multiply that by the probability of it being a one. So the probability of it being a one, it's not affected. So these two would be independent of each other. The probability of it being a one is also one sixth. So therefore we get a probability of one over 36. Or if you find the decimal version, that is 0 0.027 and the, and the seven repeats. Okay, so that would, both of these answers would be acceptable. Okay, the next one, we want the probability of rolling two even numbers. So the probability of rolling an even first. Okay, and then that would be multiplied by the, the probability of rolling an even the second time. So the probability of rolling an even the first is one half. Half of the numbers are even. Or you could write three out of six. Three out of six numbers are even. And then the probability of it being even again is one over two. So here, this probability would be 1 fourth or 0 0.25. Either one works, both are acceptable. So again, we're doing the probability of one event and then the probability of a second event, and we're multiplying these together. And both of these are independent events. Okay, there are eight action videos, three comedy videos, and five children DVDs. They're all on a shelf. We're selecting two of them. At random from the shelf, find the probability. The probability of two action DVDs if replacement occurs. So that means we're going to select one and then we're going to put it back in. So the probability of action times the probability of another action. Okay, so there were eight action films. There were 16 total. So eight out of 16 are action. We select one of those and then we put it back and we have 8 out of 16 again this is the same as 1 half times 1 half which is 1 fourth or 0 0.25 again both are acceptable answers and we're looking at if we did this in consecutive order so if we first selected a, an action dvd we put it back in and then we selected another action dvds the second one is no replacement occurs so our same thing holds. We have 8 over 16 actions. But if we select an action the first time, that action is now pulled out, and we only have 7 actions left. So we have 7 over 16 left. Pardon, 7 over, over. Because we took one of the actions out, and we took one DVD out. So both these numbers go down by 1. We still multiply them together. We get 56 over... 240 on the bottom, and then taking this one step further, we're going to say this probability is 0 0.3 or 0 0.23 repeating, and we're finished. Okay, problem C a, D, a comedy DVD, then a children's DVD, and this is if no replacement occurs. So the first one we take is a comedy DVD. This is 3 out of 16. If we want to then not put that one back, hold it out, so now we have 15 to choose from and we want a children's DVD after that. We're assuming that there's five left. So now we have 15 over 240. And we take that one step further and that probability is 
0 0.0625. Okay, so we have to think about if replacement occurs and what the probability is if it occurs or if it does not occur according to what they ask us for. All right, three cards are drawn from a standard deck of cards. Find the probability. Find the probability of three hearts if replacement occurs. So that means we're going to choose a heart, we're going to put it back in, we're going to choose another heart, put it back in, and then we're going to choose another one. So we can do this with three. That's completely fine. So if a replacement occurs, we have one-fourth or 13 out of 52 cards are hearts. Okay. If replacement occurs, that means we put it back in, and that means that the probability of drawing a heart again is 13 out of 52. And the probability again is 13 out of 52. And now we have to multiply all of these together. And when we do this, we find that our probability is 0 0.015625. And since this decimal ends, I want to write the entire thing. Okay, so sometimes we'll round. But since this one, you look in your calculator, it ends. Let's, let's go ahead and write the entire thing. The second one is if no replacement occurs. And replacement is one of the biggest things on here. Okay, it, it affects everything. So drawing a heart the first time is 13 out of 52. If we have a heart and we don't put it back in, so no replacement, we're not replacing that card, we now have 51 cards to choose from. But we only have 12 hearts because we've already pulled a, a heart out of the deck and it's sitting next to us, so now we only have 12 hearts that are available. And then our third one, there is now 50 cards left because we have two cards sitting next to us. They're both hearts, so we're down to 11 hearts. And now we can multiply these probabilities together to get our final probability of drawing three hearts in a row without replacing. We represent it as a fraction, and then we take that one more step and we say this probability is 0 0.01327. Okay, and that's approximate. That's rounded. So if you look at these two, the probabilities are different if replacement occurs or if the cards are not replaced. I want you to hit pause right now. I want you to complete A and B on example four, and then go ahead and hit play to resume once you have completed them to check your answers. Here's the work that I've shown. Notice that the bottom, the sample space, the total outcomes is reduced because we're not replacing anything. Um, and then the, notice that we multiply the tops, we multiply the bottoms, and then we do the, the division in order to get the probability. All right, for the next. So choosing these classes, there's five different options. And the first question says, she wants to know what the probability is that her first two classes in the morning will be pre-calculus and chemistry. And that's in either order. Okay, so what, what I'm going to think about here is what's the probability that the first class, first hour, is one of these two? And that probability is 2 over 5. We're, I'm going to multiply that by the probability that the second one is another one of those classes. So to keep in mind that if the first one is selected as one of those classes, there's only one left, and then there's also only four to choose from. So here we'd have 2 over 20 or 1 over 10 or 0.1 as the probability. So we, we do it in a similar fashion, and we ask ourselves, how many possibilities are left? We're going to talk about another way that we can go about doing this problem in class, um, but this that's the basic multiplying of probabilities for that specific problem. All right, the next one says, what's the probability she will have either class first period? Okay, so looking at first period, there's going to be a total possibilities, a sample space of five possibilities. You want either class, so that's going to be two out of five, or that's the same as saying 0 0.4. Both are good. Okay, and then the, what's the probability that she will have either class second period? Okay, so we're just looking at second period, and that's also going to be a probability of 2 over 5 because we're just looking at a single class period, and, and we're saying that, that we have possibilities there. So it's 2 out of 5 or 0.4. Many times on probability, we, we think about this type of problem where there's, where there's pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. And what we, what we try to do is we, we try to say, what if I pick them both at the exact same time? What I want you to consider, though, is what if you don't pick them both at the same time? What if you pick one 
and then you pick the other one. And that's really the way that you want to go about doing these problems. So here we have 3, 8, 4, and 10. That is a total of 25 coins. So keep that in mind. The probability that we select two pennies, that means the probability of selecting one penny times the probability of selecting another penny and no replacement occurs, which is huge. So we have 25, the probability of selecting one penny would be three out of this 25. And then the probability of not replacing that, so now we only have 24 coins. Okay, and we also only have two pennies. So what we want to do is we want to multiply these two probabilities together. And when we do, we get 0 0.01 as our probability. All right, if we're doing the probability of selecting two dimes, we want to take the probability of selecting one dime. So the probability of selecting one dime would be 4 out of 25. And we're going to multiply that by the probability of selecting another dime after the replacement has not occurred. Okay, so we're taking that dime, we're pulling it out, so there's only three dimes left, and there's 24 coins left. So at this point, we would have 12, a little crazy there, over 600, which would give a probability of 0 0.02. So on these, always consider what is the probability of selecting one, and then what's the probability of selecting the second one. So don't don't please, please, please do not try to consider selecting the two pennies at the exact same time. Okay, the, it, it's much easier to think about it as selecting one penny, and then do we put it back, do we not put it back, and how is the, the second probability affected by that?